Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another lecture on aesthetic crown lengthening. And this is part two of three videos. In part one, I talked to you about meeting your patient, understanding their concerns, and also reaching a diagnosis and a treatment plan. In part two, I'm going to talk about how I prepare for the procedure by doing a digital simulation. Now, our patient had a few concerns. She didn't like the appearance of her smile because she was showing too much gingiva, an excessive gingival display, and also short teeth, which is a function of too much tissue. She also didn't like the appearance of the upper lip because she felt there was a tissue tag and the inside of the upper lip was everting. So that we suspected the large frenum that is causing it. She was also concerned with a dark lesion on the buccal gingiva of tooth number nine. So in part one, I talked about delayed passive and delayed active eruption that are causing the excess tissue and also the abnormal teeth proportions. So if you didn't watch part one, go back and watch it so you can understand the etiology, the diagnosis, and also be able to explain this to the patient before you move forward. So the treatment plan that I outlined was an aesthetic crown lengthening on both the central and the lateral incisors, removing soft tissue to improve the gingival display, and also to improve the teeth proportions. Now it so happened that the lesion to be removed is in as part of the crown lengthening, so that worked, worked out perfectly. We can achieve both. The last part of the procedure is to perform a phrenectomy reducing the size of the frenum, and you'll see in part three, when I actually describe the surgery, how it helped me with the flap management. So this is the treatment plan, aesthetic crown lengthening, removing the lesion, addressing that, and a phrenectomy. Now, before we move on with the surgery, really it's important to understand what would be the ideal gingival margin and you know, be able to visualize it, and it's something that you can do with digital simulation, no doubt about it. You can also use a diagnostic wax-up or a mock-up in the patient's mouth, and for me, it really helps me to do the virtual simulation. It also helps me to understand the patient's expectations because I'll show this to them, and it also increases the case acceptance because patients looking at the uh, you know, simulated final result are more motivated to move forward with the treatment. I already posted a video on YouTube uh, you can see the title here on the bottom where you can get some more information and also get some additional training with this type of uh, process. So what we're going to do for the digital simulation, we'll use two photos. One is the retracted frontal view, one is the smile view. And I recommend you do the simulation for both the photos. It's important for the patient to see that and for you and see the effect on the smile and on the patient's face. Now naturally I'm not going to show the patient's face in this video for obvious reasons, but I suggest you do this with your patients. So we're going to use a software called Photoshop Elements that you can download, you can try it out for free and uh, purchase it, it's relatively inexpensive. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the folder and open up the retracted view with Photoshop Elements. So let's open this up, now you're looking at the software and the photo is important, Im imported. It's also important. So <laughs> we'll go to the filter on the upper tab, we'll pick Distort, and then Liquify. And what it does, it turns the picture, the pixels, into gel. And using a brush tool, you can now start moving the gingiva in the proper direction, the apical direction, creating the virtual crown lengthening. I would pick the largest brush size. You can see it's on 600 right now. And start with the central incisors, create a little zenith, this is the little you know, deviation to the distal of the gingival margin that are um, appropriate for the central incisors. So same for number nine, create, it, create some symmetry. And once you're done with the incisors, move on to the laterals. Now the laterals have a, a gingival margin that is slightly more incisal to the central and the canines. Okay, so once you're done with the simulation, you can save it. Now, if you made a mistake and something like this happened, you can basically undo and, and work at it as long as you need until you're happy with the result. So, we're going to save this. We're going to press OK. Now, we're going to keep the original file. So, we'll just save as. We'll keep the 
image serial number, we add the word simulation. Okay, and that's important. Keep the original image, save it in the same folder under the highest quality, maximum quality. And what you'll do next, you'll go back to the folder. Now you have an extra image in there. So what you'll do, you'll pick both images, you'll open them up with the viewer, and now you can toggle between the two and you'll see the results. Naturally, the lesion is still there, but you'll see the change in the teeth proportions and uh, basically less gingival with the virtual simulation. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, we'll go back to the folder. Now we'll work on the smile picture. We'll open it, open it with Photoshop Elements, same way, but before you move to the liquify option, you need to take one more step. You need to use a tool called the Magnetic Lasso Tool. And what it does, if you click one time, it'll start tracing the upper lip. Okay, you'll do it carefully. It'll trace the lower border of the lip. You'll just move it along the lip like that from side to side. Don't ask me how it does that, but it works perfectly. So once you reach the other side, you'll trace the upper border. Now, this is not that important to catch the upper border of the lip so much as long as you close the, uh, the structure right in here. Okay, now you have this part outlined. So you go to the middle of the structure, you left click and choose layer via copy. Okay, layer via copy. And you'll see on the lower hand side, you created a layer that is just the, basically a crop of the upper lip. The next part, you'll go back to the original image. You choose the layer that says background. Now you go to your filter and choose liquify. Now it already created a shortcut. I'll show you again. You pick distort and liquify. Now you'll start creating the simulation again with in the presence of the lip. So you'll do the same thing. You'll start lengthening those central incisors first. Make them symmetrical. Now naturally it will start distorting the lip. So I don't suggest you do it in front of the patient. They may get the wrong idea of what you're trying to do. So we'll start doing the simulation on those uh, lateral incisors and the central incisors. Okay. And what I suggest then, take some of those um, extensions of the lip and push them upwards as, as well, including in between the teeth. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay. Now you click OK, and because we saved the original layer, um, and you can probably crop it a little bit better than what I did here, uh, we are now still have the upper lip, and we have the simulated longer teeth and, and better teeth proportions. So again, we'll save it as the same image, but add the word simulation. And we save it as a JPEG, OK? under the highest maximum quality. And then go back to your folder. Now you have an additional image and you can uh, certainly uh, highlight both of them and open them up in a viewer. Now you can toggle between the two and you can show this to your patient and show them the uh, what this will do to their smile. Again, I suggest you know you do a little bit of a better job in, in terms of cropping the upper lip right in here. Okay, so this is basically the way to perform a digital simulation. And you can, you can do it in front of the patient's eye or shortly after, and you can definitely email them the uh, photos. And that would help you greatly in understanding what the ideal gingival margin would be. Convey this to the patient, improve your uh, case acceptance, and I, uh, I strongly suggest you do it. It's very, very uh, simple and uncomplicated. So with digital simulation, the way I showed it to you, you can create a soft tissue blueprint. That's the pink print, as I call it. And it will definitely help you to prepare for the surgery. It'll help you evaluate the patient's expectations and, and uh, increase your case acceptance and help you prepare for the surgery. And that is the topic of video number three. I'm going to talk about the actual procedure, how I perform it, and what were some of the challenges and some pointers, and you will be able to do this in your own practice. So I look forward to seeing you in 
part three, the surgery. And I suggest you check out surgicalmaster.com for more videos and interesting presentation. And I look forward to seeing you in part three.